What's up, Matthew 25 Ballers? And today we're going to be taking a look at the gameplay I got against the Ravens. Let's hope I don't get disconnected for the third time trying to record this live commentary. And uh, let's see what happens. But um, anyways, uh, real quick, here's your kick. You want to kick it all the way up and flick it all the way to the left. And then you're going to flick it down and not click it again. And you're going to see what's going to happen here is... I'm going to get able to run down the sideline and just make a play. He's not going to be able to return it with Todd Heap. Sometimes they'll even drop it, and you see they get the ball at the 30, 35-yard line most of the time. But real quick, uh, this is Scheme of the Week gameplay, and what we're going to be doing here is analyzing how I run the scheme that I just taught you guys how to make, and uh, we're going to talk about how I run it. So 4-6 normal is the defense, and then the offense is Houston Offensive Playbook. And uh, we're just going to come out, baseline, and press, and show blitz our cover three like we always do. And uh, we're going to run our base setup with the purples. And let me get this other purple off. Realign, the, realign my team here. And uh, this is a strong, uh, this is like that weak, close stuff. And there's your almost pick. And that's why I like to cover three. So we got, uh, basically what he did there is he ran mesh with the corner route. Um, so just knowing that and, and, and kind of seeing, okay, he likes to throw the corners. So a lot of people are liking corner routes this year. I myself like to use them a lot too. Uh, with the right route combinations behind them, they are really effective. All right, now second and ten in this situation again, I just like to stay basic probably for the whole for the whole first drive and just run the base play, run and uh, I stay inside, force him to cut to the outside there and uh, hold him to five. And like I said, the, the cover three stock, the way we like to set up with the base play, uh, is actually not that bad of a run defense in, in terms of uh, not giving up a ton of yardage. Um, third and five. Uh, this is a situation where, again, I don't know all of what he wants to do, so just a basic cover three. And I'm going to leave him in the flat zones this time, but I'm watching out for the corner routes. Uh, stick, and there's a, oh, there we go. So there's a slant route. So he just ran stick out of the tray, tray open, and we, we got to stop there. Now we got to lock him up on fourth down. Normally in fourth down, uh, I like to send the fire zone three, but since we're so close um, in a situation, fourth and five is, is, is not as much to get. I like to send plays like rush outside or you know even the cover three here. So I'm going to try and gas him up uh, with the rush outside, the double side pressure setup we talked about. And then I'm going to run zone on one side of the field and man on the other side to try to confuse him. He throws a screen. That's a checkmate, and that's what we get for that's what we get for being aggressive too early. Optimally, guys, you probably should have stayed in the cover three there. I just made a bad mistake and, and ended up costing me. It ended up really costing me there. Uh, ended up, you know, giving up 10 yards. Could have been worse. Could have been a touchdown. But obviously, you want to stay basic. And once again, that's why I keep saying you want to stay basic for the first drive. So here we're just gonna go basic two man under. And um, okay, so run. And we just crash down and, and, and just kind of flow with the play and uh, just get in, the, get in the way there. So that's what we like to do out of the two men under. Just run it the same way we run the cover three in terms of run defense, the way we like to, uh, if, we're, if they run the ball and we're in our two men under, that's how we like to play it with our user safety. So second and eight, this is a situation where you want to send your basic zone blitz. reason we're going to do that, we've kind of seen some plays. He likes the corner routes and stuff. And uh, I really want to, you know, I really, really think that uh, he's going to have some tough time with pressure. Uh, so here we go, cover fire zone three, right edge pressure here, and we're just trying to force him to under under three yards. If if we can hold him to under three yards here, this is a successful play. He's probably going to be throwing a pass, and that's why we're trying to get him. And we're right there. Oh, what a catch! I'm holding ball hawk and right on right up in his grill, but no reaction to the ball. That's awesome. That's what I really. I mean, I I was telling EA Sports the other day. I really like that when that happens. <laughs> I called him up on the phone and said, you know what? I really like that feature in the game. No, I'm just kidding, guys. Uh, sometimes that'll happen, and you just gotta you just gotta live with it. First and ten. Uh, here we go. So let's see. Basic. Stay basic here. Uh, actually, should have set the run up, set up the run defense. And there you go. You get that. Get that through the gap. And there you go. Now we're now we got him in a second and long, and now we can play our max coverage defenses. We can send the cover four at him. And again, this is optimal time for cover four. Probably should have ran that last time, but I ended up blitzing and getting dotted. So, uh, just remember the max coverage setup, and set it up, and here we go. And there we go. Oh, my. I would, I, like, if he would have, oh, my gosh. If he would have caught that. Oh, my goodness. If he would have caught that. So, yeah, I got luck. kind of got lucky there because, I mean, he had a chance to make a play on the ball, even though I was standing right on his. So, I don't know. All right. Uh, third and nine. This is your situation for Fire Zone 3. This is odd. I mean, you know, last time we probably ran it one down too early, um, and now we're gonna get him in the right time zone here, and we're gonna force 
like that. And there's your sack. Now you got him on the 37. It's a lot longer of a field goal than on the 30. And a good defensive drive there. A couple mistakes. Two bad play calls by me. And uh, led to him getting a little bit more yardage than he probably should have got that drive. And uh, ended up going to be allowing him to get a field goal if he wants. But if he doesn't go for the field goal here, uh, we are certainly going to send the fire zone three once again at him. Okay, he's not going for it. Fire zone three. And put the... I put the two linebackers in deep blue zones. My job is to watch the corner route. User swat that, and uh, there we go. Good drive. Uh, good defensive stand. You know, he, he ended up taking the bait of going for it and ended up working out for us. So now it's time to get into the offense. And, guys, this offense is really nice. Uh, it's really good. So the two zigs and then the streak as a base setup. And we just come out. We read the box. Okay, we see he's got five. He's got six in the box. We only got we got six in the box. Numbers match up. Snap the ball. And uh, here we go. And there's that deep corner route that I was talking about in the e in the guide. There, the zigs were taken away. We stayed patient. Waited to the last possible second. The corner route broke right at the time that we needed it to. And we got the pass off for big yardage on first down. So we saw he liked to blitz on first. So if he looks a similar look here. Um, okay, so he's, he, you see the linebacker shifts down. When the linebackers do that, that normally means they're blitzing. So that's a kind of a tell. So I'm going to check into my split offset here, my, or my split flex, and call the slot seam. He's backing off the coverage, so it might be a cover zero blitz. Uh, he's tr maybe trying to play a little deception. Maybe trying to be a little deceptive with his coverage. Oh, I got called for delay a game. Dang it. Shouldn't be getting called for delay a game, guys. That's on me. That's on me. I was talking too much. <laughs> I was talking too much. Dang it. My bad, guys. Uh, I wish you had, like, the audibles instead of having to scroll through all of them. It would be cool if you could get them through the buttons like we did last year, but uh, that's all right. All right. So, here we go. Um, press coverage on the outside. Uh, I really think it's going to be man coverage. Let's get into the tight doubles on. Wide receiver cross. There it is. Takes me like 20 minutes to figure out where my plays are. Oh, I will like it. Last year, you could be like, just boom, there. Yep, two men under. Because you see we motion across. He follows. Either two men under or a really horrible zone. Um, yep, two men under. Cover, man coverage. Hit DeMarco Murray in the flat. And uh, that's our first read on the play. And that's why we like the tight doubles on for beating man coverage. I like going no huddle because I can have more time at the snap of the ball so I can make decision. All right, still press coverage on the outside. He's backing off. He changed his play. Ah, shoot. He's probably in a cover. Probably in a, Actually, I think he's in a zone blitz. Yeah, that's why I think he's in a zone blitz. So we're going to go to the shotgun bunch. We're going to run mesh post here. I really think that he's in a blitz here. So I'm, uh, first read is Murray here. Snap, go. Yep, blitz right off the left edge. And there we go. Marco Murray blew up that guy. And let's get in for six boys. Nice nice drive first off. Good job. And uh, that's what we need to be doing offensively. Now here, we go. I like to go for two this year. I think offense is just so dominant and it's tough to stop, uh, it's tough to stop us on the goal line here. So I really like going for two. Tight end fades are really effective. Uh, comeback routes on the outside are really effective. Oh, as I say that, I got... Dang it. Uh, under center is actually probably a little bit better of an option on the like from the five yard, five yards and in. Probably should have just ran it there honestly, because normally guys, I'm telling you, man, if you run the ball on the goal line, you're gonna have success this year. It's tough to stop. I mean, you saw in the guide we have some plays, but not a whole lot of people have those plays, and uh, it's it's just tough to stop runs in that situation. So let me see if I can set this up a little better. Get the, get the music up a little bit. Uh, this is Skillet. If you guys don't know who Skillet is, it's a Christian band, and, and they're really not. They're really a, a, a nice band to listen to. They have some good music, so I like to listen to them while I play men. I'm actually going to start doing that a little more. I, I at first didn't do it, but now I see like it, it doesn't interfere with the video so much, so I like to do it. Cover three base setup here. Um, oh, three guys are on him. Oh. So that might be something. He might be on him. He might have him on a certain route or something. Uh, we're going to go max zone here. And we're spotlighting uh, the tight end there that he just threw to. I'm all over him. Pick. 
Ho, 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 holy cow, I was all over that. Oh my gosh. Dang it. Alright, so good play by him. That's unfortunate. That's the one problem with the going for two is if you don't get it, then if they, you know, if you're, if you're playing the touchdown, touchdown, you know, trading there. Ah, that's so stupid of me. I don't know why I called the, oh, uh, I should have called cover four there. Dang it. I actually should have just called man coverage. Man coverage stops the tight end streaks this year. They actually kind of did a good job on it last year, but really lock it up this year. Dad going, and that was just a dumb play call. And then I tried to ball hawk instead of swat and end up costing me. And last year we could spin on that. This year you got a juke. <sighs> okay. All right. Let's go shotgun normal. Give me to my base stuff here. All right. So last drive we saw man coverage and then we saw zone blitzes. So cover. All right. So we see backed off corners. Um, I really think it's going to be a zone blitz just because of the way that safety moved. Um, so we're going to go to the, the zone or the blitz beating formation here. Set a play up. First read is wide open. And there we go. And we got good user skill. Actually, we don't. We just got lucky that our guys blocked him. And, and that's why you get a blitz beater. Because in situations like that where you could hit them quick, uh, you know, you're going to be going to the house a lot. So that's why we like to have that blitz beater in our arsenal. And um, here I'm going to go to my X-Factor formation. I didn't, br I didn't break it down uh, for you guys, but it's really simple. It's just you just run the plays. Um, honestly, I mean, they're, they're all set up. It's very simple to run. And I, you know, I don't do it much. It's just kind of like my red zone formation. So, like, not a red zone, but like my, uh, if I need something. So, Lenny Audible gave me my opportunity here. We see that. So, we're going to check into our single back doubles because we know that they have a run out of it. And I'm just kind of wanting to run the ball here because you got five uh, offensive linemen and a tight end. He's got uh, four. He's got six at the box, so that's one-on-one. -on -one. Everyone does their job. We should be in, and there we go. Get in for two. Simple stuff, guys. Just read the box, read the numbers. You could audible into so many different formations this year. The only reason I audibled into single back doubles is because I knew I had a run out of it. Um, that was the only reason. It wasn't because it's in, you know, it, it was a specific run I needed or anything. So I could have just audible to the trips tied in, but shotgun runs aren't as effective on in the red zone as they are outside of the red zone, it's just by experience. So because run commit kind of locks up shotgun runs. In my opinion, uh, some people may differ. Some people may not think so. All right. So we are not giving up that tight end streak again. So we're just going to go basic two man under here. And, of course, he's not even in the formation he was doing it out of. Pick. Oh, my gosh. Catch the ball, buddy. Catch the ball, buddy. Dang it. Dang it. Okay. Okay. That is unfortunate. All right, so second and ten, this situation, cover four. Uh, it's almost automatic for me at this point that I love to run the cover four in this situation. Because of this right here, the deep blues. And I'll see what we got. Uh, C route. Good call, buddy. Good call. Good call. I like that play. Good, good job, buddy. All right. Uh, shoot. We'll go two men under. Purples on the outside to stop the C routes. Pick that off. Oh my gosh, he is making crazy catches on me. Alright. Second and six here. Uh, this is where you try to push him back. You try to have that last line of fence. So we like to send Rush outside in this situation. This is all out. Uh, this is money. This is a, a big money down for you. If you can get a sack here, you got him. You got him stopped. There ain't no way he's converting it on this defense. If he, but it, but if he gets three to two yards, he's probably going to convert. So what we like to do is we like to take a, a gamble, try to get heavy pressure in this situation. And if we don't get the pressure in, we're going to wrap up, and he's going to get a first down, and that's going to be it. So uh, that's why we like to send this stuff now. Pressure hot off the left. Nice blitz. Let's go. Third and six. We got him. All right. So we got him on that. We got him, we got him hesitating just a second. And uh, here we go. So now third and six in this situation, you are going to be sending the uh, – let's send a rush outside again. But we're going to send man on one side and zone on the other side. Oh, shoot. Oh, no. 
Alright, here we go. Oh, the son of a biscuit! The Who throws a freaking curl route to a tight end? Oh, overran the stupid thing. Dang it. Had him too. Gosh, dang it. Alright, uh, basic. I don't know what I'm doing. That's bad adjustments. That's the wrong adjustments. Look at that. Look at Barry Church get out there and make a play on the ball. Big play by him there. Because the rest of the defense was not doing what I wanted them to do. Second and 15, obviously here you're playing drop back D. Uh, obviously. Pass commit all day. Uh, pick. Oh my gosh, another dropped interception. Oh my goodness. Oh. Dang it. All right. Uh, this is a blitz I didn't break down in the guide. Fire zone three. What we like to do is we like to do the single side pressure, but we just re-blitz the linebacker on the left side too to get two way. And we're really watching out for that stupid curl pick. Thank you, Maurice Claiborne. Finally, we got him. Good job, buddy. Let's go. Good D. So what we did there was we got two. We sent two guys free at the quarterback just in case he blocked a guy. And we had that all those yellow zones in the middle of the field for that uh, the the middle uh, seam passes he was throwing, and uh, ended up finally getting him. Uh, obviously, two men under is actually a better call there. Um, but I got you know I got a little greedy and, and kind of went to my bread and butter early, so that may cost me later on. But we'll see. All right, nobody over the slot receiver. Uh, this is something we did not break down. Or actually, no. If nobody's over the slot receiver, like double slot go, because that means that right there, and that means now you've got him, and you're just gonna, yeah, that's a nice read right there. So let's go. Uh, so basically, I knew that since nobody was over the slot receiver, they're probably gonna be sitting heavy pressure. And in order, instead of going to my blitz beating formation that he's already seen, I figured I'd throw a play that he hasn't seen yet. Ended up paying off. We got six points and. Uh, that's why I did what I did there. Uh, you know, a little adjustment you're not going to see in the guide. It's not textbook. It's not supposed to be happening like that. But it happened like that, and we take advantage of it. All right, I really like this play. Yep. Oh, oh my gosh. Mm, gosh, dang it, the stupid guy. Just swatted the ball down at the line of scrimmage. He's a blitzing freaking defensive tackle. Dang it. That's one problem with the the zig. It was wide open, but they it was wide open, but they just and then I kicked the then I kicked it deep, and we don't ever want to kick it deep in this game. If you do kick it deep, what I recommend doing is taking your kicker and running him all the way out to the outside so they can't get to the edge. Um. So yeah, all right, 46 normal. We got a two possession lead, and this is optimum situation for. Um, we're just going to start running the uh, basic stuff. Here we're going to go to the basic run D. Alright, corner route, I know that. And then I'm going to jump back. Yep, good D. Good D. So I knew the corner route was a possibility, so I went, hesitated at it, baited him to throw it back, and by that time he hesitated just long enough for the pressure to get in. And uh, that's why we like that there. Here we're going to go with the two-man under. Uh, set it up like the basic principle. And we're going to pass commit this. Let's see. That's to be picked off. Yep. Barry Church. Cash money. Uh, so there he tested the, the seams again. And Barry Church just made a play on the ball. Uh, so good defense by Barry Church on that. And that's why I like that's what I said about that two men under. Two men under is going to do a better job in the middle of the field uh, because of the the way that they design that defense in the game. The man coverage uh, understands that there's no help over the middle, so they're going to play more to the middle. That's why out routes beat man, but you know that's why drag routes don't beat man unless you know how to throw them properly. So run commit. So I don't know why he's blitzing so much. Like chill out, bro. This is not Madden 13, man. This is not Madden 13. Like I love the blitz, but. Man, this dude is just going nuts. Uh, so this situation, I mean, you obviously know he's probably thinking pressure. So what I'm gonna do, and and, and this is a little bit of a, a little a little thing that I like to do, is I'm gonna run the halfback counter because you look at the if you see the formation here, we can pull that. Yep, that's exactly what I wanted to happen. We can pull that guy out, and now we have nobody to stop Murray if he gets past the line of scrimmage. And just like I said, there he goes, and voila! Whoopsies. Oh, that would have been a dirty spin move. Dang it. But, yeah, that, that's a that's just a little thing.
thing that you, you don't you don't pick up on in practice mode, but you certainly can start to pick up on in games by when defenses throw different formations at you. Look at the formation. And that's why we that's why we choose the doubles as a base because you can see everything a lot easier than you can out of a tight uh, set. So that's why we like the doubles as a base. Corner strike, uh, just a simple simple like filler play there. Uh, I didn't know what he was doing. I assumed it was gonna be it wasn't gonna be a blitz again, so I just took what he gave me. And once again, he's in that three four. Uh, I really like double sluggo in this situation. Yep. Okay, so third and in inches. This is uh, optimum. We go to three headed rushing attack all day in this situation. So I gotta find it though. I wish they just let you put the formations in. Like if you didn't want the formation as an audible, you didn't have to have it in there. Uh, that's not the way it works, unfortunately. All right, stacking the line, obviously. Uh, we're going to check into the bunch here. We have a lot. I mean, because you think about it, third in inches, you, you have fourth in inches still. So we're going to go to mesh post. Uh, because we're, we're, I really think it's heavy pressure time for him. Snap, go. And there we go. There's your drag. Uh, progression read. They had a dude flow out with the running back, so I just took the late read uh, of the drag there. All right, let's see. Where's the trips tied in at? There it is. I'm going to look at the halfback count. I don't want to show the halfback counter too much. Uh, yeah, let's go halfback counter here. Get the pulling guard out there, and there you go. So, just a simple read. I mean, you had numbers. I mean, they were shifted to the left, so we just took the run to the right. And uh, that's why we like to do that there. All right, we are going to go to the two back set here. I, I I like two back as well because we can do a lot out of it on the red zone. A lot of ways we can attack the defense. Uh, we're just going to run draw here, run commit. Yep, there you go. I uh, just kind of thought he would either be run commit or draw back D. If the draw does a good job, uh, if they're not blitzing, the draw is going to be open on this play and he, he he was blitzing but he ran commit ran commit's not necessarily a blitz it's more of a they just all shift to one side of the field and luckily he didn't go to the right so there's the kick we like to do all right so uh think about it two minutes left in the second quarter you're trying to go all out here this is this is that situation where you're sending you're sending your rush outside every down and the reason you're doing that is because you want to force him to make a bad decision and and throw a pick so we're going to run, there's your screen, get out there, make a tackle, we didn't make a tackle unfortunately, dive tackle because that's the, probably the best way to tackle this year, and unfortunately that's, that's the name of the game guys, you, you, you're aggressive, you're aggressive, sometimes you can leave yourself open, but this is probably the best time in my opinion for, for us to be aggressive as a defense. Um, 36 yard line, you really, I, I'm, I'm saying, like, it's like, wait, think about it like this. If he scores quick, you still have another drive within a half to go score. So this is why we like to send heavy pressure in this situation. Here we're going to go with the fire zone three, because uh, I haven't seen him block a halfback yet, so I want to just kind of see if it's still going to be an effective avenue for pressure. There he does block a halfback. Of course he does. And unfortunately, Church did not react to the ball. So now we're going to go into rush outside mode. Set it up. There we go. Pressure comes in. Oh, he's right on that. Okay, so slant left. And then here, down here, you don't need the blitz. Uh, you're just going to go drop back D here. Ooh, good run. Luckily, we, luckily the, the, the run, the, the basic defenses that we run actually do a good job of stopping the, the power runs like that. All right, so this situation, cover three. Uh, I didn't get a chance to break this down, but I like to uh, yellow the corners in the red zone because they can't go past there. Ah! Ooh, you caught me, man. Good play. Oh, He caught me because I, I always say base the line and show blitz, but when they go to compress, you have to unbase the line and then re-show blitz, and I just couldn't I couldn't do it in time there. Good play by him. Way to get, it, way to get him a score. But look, we still have a minute 30. 
So, I mean, that's what I, that's why I did what I did there. Because even if he scored, uh, think about it. If I call the right plays and I, and I get like four sacks or a sack and then a pick and then a, and then, or a sack and an incomplete pass and then a pick, I still have time to score. This way, what I'm doing is I'm allowing him to, to, to maybe be able to, I'm leaving myself open. But in, in, and the only reason I'm doing that is so that I can potentially get the ball back so I can score again before half because I got the ball. Um, what I mean by that is you're not going to see me play a lot of drop back coverages because I don't want him to have the ball for two and a half minutes in that situation because then I'm, I, I have no, that, then I have no threat of scoring. But this way, I have threat of scoring. So that's why I like what I like there because I have plenty of time here. You know, I'm, I'm just chilling back. You know, I'm cool. No pressure here on me. Plenty of time to do whatever I need to do. He's been running a lot of his own lately, so we're going to hit him with the PA post. Arguably my favorite play in the game. <laughs> um, I like to streak the running back sometimes, just, you know, just for fun. And I hit the wrong button. Dang it. I just hit the wrong button there. Tight end was wide open in the flats, and I hit X because if I'll show you what I mean here. So in the bunch, sometimes that they switch the they switch like the the icon. So right there, I like hit X. Like see here, mesh post, he's X, but on PA post, he's not. See, he changes to Y. <laughs> Dang it, that, that gets that gets to me sometimes. Oh shoot, he's blitzing here. Mesh post. Running back in the flat. Nope. There you go. That's why we're on mesh post because we, you know, we're in our zone beating formation. So we're always going to be able to beat the zone out of the bunch. But mesh post is your is your play. It's your it's your it's your bread and butter for situations like that. Off coverage. Uh, I'm really thinking that we may be able to hit this smash route on the backside here in this PA slot corner. I want to show it out of the run mainly because I like it out of this play, and we'll see what we get here. Man coverage, we'll just take that. And that's why we'll take that, because running in this game is really effective. And uh, throwing a wheel route is basically like putting the running back on a toss. Um, so the, the reason I took that, we had a one-on-one -on -one with the safety with our running back, and, and he was moving, our running back was moving upfield at, you know, at the point of attack. So very simple. Uh, and then we just take the first read. I mean, if it's open, we're going to take it. Uh, this situation, I think he's going to go man. So I'm going to go to my uh, bread and butter here. This uh, skins out and up. And uh, let's see if we can get something here. Yep, man coverage. I got Jason went over the middle. And there we go. 35 seconds. Uh, tick, 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 tick. But we got plenty of time here. Don't get too, don't get too excited here. We have plenty of time. I'm actually going to put Williams on a flat route here. Man coverage. Threw it too early. Gosh, dang it! I threw it too early. That could have been bad. I should have just went to the stupid man beater. Dang it! Unfortunately, on that play, I got a little antsy in the pocket because I knew the pressure was coming off the edge, and I just made a bad read. Oh, I had the, I made a, I made the good read, but I just I just missed him. Uh, double slow go here. I like this because you know we're gonna get the ball out quicker. And there we go. Oh my gosh, these defensive linemen for the Baltimore Ravens are batting everything down on me. Okay, so two times in a row I've seen man coverage. Oh, uh, whoa. Two times in a row I've seen man coverage. Uh, so obviously, we're going to go to our man beater here. If he lines up, which he does line up. So that's nice. And then we're going to get into Brown's cross. And we're going to run the setup with the hitch. There we go. Click on user catch. Oh, hey, what the heck? All right, so uh, that's unfortunate. Three times. One time I threw it too early. It was on my bad. Second time, defense alignment batted the ball out of the air. And then that time, their corner made a phenomenal uh, swat on that, which really rarely will happen if you if you you know if you get that inside position like I did do. So I don't know. That's kind of that's tough. But we'll take our three. Going to half up, you know, going in the half up three scores in a situation like that. If you, if you, even if you score a touchdown, your your main goal there is to get up by three scores. Because if I didn't say I say I went for it there and I didn't score, then it's only a two score game. Whereas maybe in a situation where it's seven versus three, so if you're up, if it's a tie game, 
you know, you maybe go for it because you, you know, the difference is not that big of a deal. So, I like having three possession lead going into half. That's pretty nice. Uh, eight seconds. This is going to be our two man under, and we like to just max. Uh, good, kind of cover the deep zones here. And okay, so we've got four seconds. Uh, I would watch out for a screen here. So I'm going to do that with my user player. No, he's in Hail Mary. We should be fine. Yep. Yep, there we go. Alright, so going to have him three scores. Man, I like this song. Alright, so, uh, pretty good half overall by me. I got, I think I have ball coming out. So, and then again, that's why we take that three possession lead going into half, and now we have the opportunity to go up by four scores and uh, really put our foot down on him. And, and he's having some, he is starting to kind of move the ball on us, so obviously need to recognize that and maybe switch some stuff up. All right, so onside kicking. <laughs> uh, haven't seen onside kick work this year, so I'm just gonna stay. I'm gonna keep doing what I was doing last year. I'm not gonna worry about it too much. Oh, um, okay. Here, obviously man coverage. Obviously man coverage. Let's get into tight doubles on. Uh, and here now we have enough space. We can run the corner route across. Now you see, because I mean that's I mean, they they line up automatically. Normally it's gonna be man coverage. First read not open, second read wide open. He was actually in zone there. 14 of 18, that is pathetic. Dang, I'm sucking. Ah. Don't got my reads down yet, boys. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, so heavy blitz here, obviously. I mean, just based off the look of the formation, probably going to be pressure. Uh, so we're just going to check down into the halfback slip screen. The reason we're going to do that here is, you see the, the safety over there? They're probably blitzing both of those guys. Yep. Throw the ball, Robo! Oh my gosh, Robo! I had DeMarco Polo open for a freaking touchdown, dang it. Come on, I mean, that's why we that's why we suck. Man, we can't throw the ball. 73% completion percentage. Ugh. Alright. Uh, off coverage. Probably beating zone. But I'm going to go ahead and run skins out and up just to be safe. Because it's a it's a it's a big down here. Wheel routes open. Oh, hold on to the ball. That's why you get Demarco Murray. Most running backs will drop that with Demarco Murray's high catch rating. Oh, he's just. That's why I love the Cowboys this year. Cowboys, tell me the Cowboys. I want you guys to in the comments below in this video. I want you to tell me two weaknesses the Cowboys have. Two. Linebackers. Every linebacker on their team is fast, strong, and can play. Their offense is loaded again this year because, once again, the, the quarterback doesn't matter as much as it did last year. And not only does quarterback not matter as much as it used to, but also the court, the defensive backs don't matter as much as they used to. So we that's probably what you, you guys were going to say is the Cowboys' one big weakness was they didn't have that fourth guy um, at, at the defensive secondary. But... I, I'm cool with that because I'll just use a guy with good speed or good hip power, put him in there, and it works. Uh, they cover the same way uh, from my experience. So there, uh, we ran the Texan out and up there for you guys. You don't know. The reason I ran that, I thought he was in zone coverage, but I didn't I didn't want to go back to the man beater because I had just been in it. So, And that's why I say like the base formation, you can do everything out of. You don't have to audible out, really. Technically, you really don't. But to give them different looks and, and show different things, that's why I like to use it. Obvious blitz here. We'll go double sluggo. Yep, right there. Oh, that's sick. Oh, <laughs> dude, I love spin. I love spinning on that on that drag route. When you if you when you catch it, if you will spin uh, back to the inside. So try to make sure he spins back to the inside. Oh, it's night and day how much better this play becomes. Uh, I really think he's gonna go man, but I'm gonna run the bench just to be safe here. With the standard setup that we like to have out of it. And oh, I shouldn't have lobbed that. I got lucky. I should not have lobbed that ball. I've noticed, if you guys haven't uh, lobbed passes, though, they seem to be really effective this year. Seems like the ball hawk won't react to the, the lob ball as much. I don't know. That's just something I've been noticing. 
So that was what we exact exactly what we needed to have happen there. We go down, we score a touchdown, and now we go up by three score or four scores. And uh, now it's tough. Now it becomes now we can do a lot of what we were doing earlier uh, on in the game with those max coverages, and, and it forced him to just just force him to drive. And uh, that's what we like. To, that's what we really like to do here. Obviously here, I mean that's why I just went to the trips because you, you have to you have to base the line or you're gonna run this counter all day. And I love that about this counter run, and, and a, a lot of people do. And um, so that's why we really really like the trips tight end. From with it being out of the Houston's book, I would rather run out of the trips tight end than out of the single back doubles or wide trips or whatever. So that's why we really really like the trips tight end because it has everything we need and also has some really effective plays. Oh, give me that! Oh, Scandrick, you got to get there, buddy. Go get that. Go get the ball, my friend. I guess that's the one weakness with the kick, but the, I mean normally they won't do that, and and sometimes she'll be able to catch it. One time a guy dropped, and I got actually recovered the ball. So, anywho, uh, in this situation, you're first and you're running cover three, uh, probably for the whole first drive right now, just because of the situation. And if I was in a closer game, you'd probably see me running a lot of different things, trying to jump reads and stuff. At this point, right now, where we're at in terms of what the situation is. We're just going to be running cover three, cover four, those ma those basic plays in order to force him to drive. It has nothing to do with forcing him to or trying to take stuff away. We're just trying to take away the basic stuff, force him to have to drive up the field. Remember, we, he likes these streaks, and there's your set. That, that's why we called the cover three because – call the cover three – because we put those purples out there, they can't get deep. They, they, the purples get out deep this year. And uh, it's going to force your opponent to take the underneath stuff. With our proper user, if we're watching out for those streaks, we got him. And that's everything he wants to do. Um, and that's why we called that. I don't want you guys to just think I just called a random play. Um, you know, I certainly knew. I knew he, he had been attacking me on the corner routes and the streaks. Cover three, if I put the purples out there, they're going to do a good job against both. And uh, we'll be able to do that. So here, bunch, because he, he's been running a lot more zone lately. And the flats were covered. He was in a cover two. So we just take uh, the next read on the play, uh, read number two. Uh, and how you can tell, uh, real quick, you see the corners? You see how they're a little bit to the inside here? That means that they that he's in a zone, at least from what, from, from my experience. So I'm going to have a video on how to read the defense coming out soon. Uh, so if you guys want to check that out, go over to my YouTube channel page and hit subscribe. And uh, you'll be notified as soon as uh, every one of my videos come out, which is nice. So we're going to go back into PA post here. And I really, really like this play against zone. Oh, no. Uh, luckily, it's PA post, and he couldn't pick that off. I thought that the dude was going to press the outside guy, so I was throwing it so quick. And uh, bad read. PA post is awesome this year, but it's not as effective as it was last year. Because last year, literally, like y you could throw that flat right against cover two, s cover two, like the actual cover two, and it would be wide open. So here, I don't want to go back to bunch, but I do know that he's in zone coverage. So we're just going to run the smash concept out of the trips tied in out of the PA slot corner. And since he didn't base the line, we're just going to take the corner out to Witten there. And the reason we did that was because my first read was Murray. And I, I saw, okay, well, he, he, he usered Murray, even though I probably could have hit Murray too. So what I did was instead of hitting, instead of looking back to the left, I just knew that the tight end would be wide open. So I went ahead and hit him. I'm going to go close mesh here with the corner route. Yep, there we go. Yep, good, good play by me. All right, in this situation, you see the, the two linebackers in the A-gap? That means that it's going to be a sugar play, probably a sugar blitz. So we are going to go to the double sluggo in this situation. Call it. And there we go. There's your drag. I mean, I haven't. I rarely have to go beyond the first read on the double sluggo, which is amazing, uh, the, the power in that play. Again, has them stacked in the A-gap. In this situation, actually, you know what the best might, the best play might be is the halfback count out of the trips. Because look at this. You see how they shifted? There's no linebacker. There's no linebacker. See, now he's adjusting. Okay. He's adjusting. I still like this play. I still like this read. Good run by Marco. Chukatan Potensla. And uh, just, 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 it's just, just keep it in their head that you can always hit them on that play. And they have to get out of their stuff. 
and then, that, th then it's that mind game that we're starting to play. All right, here uh, I really sugar play again. So you know, if I, I maybe mean, it would be nice to have a stretch, but since I don't have a stretch, I'm gonna go to Brown's Cross. Reason I'm gonna do this is if you're if he is in sugar blitz, what's gonna happen is when I motion uh, Brian across here to the outside, the corner will take him, and the safety is gonna take Murray, and then nobody's gonna be guarding Williams. So let's see. I like that one-on-one -on -one matchup. User catch those hitch route guys. Very effective this year. I think you could even put them on a streak and it still works. But I love hitch routes. I I think it works better out of the hitch routes. Just just maybe just personal bias. I don't know, but I really like it against hitch routes. I did want to show you guys this um, little preview of a, of a tip I've got coming up here. Let's see if it works. I hope it works. It'd be bad if it doesn't. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. He dropped it. Oh my gosh, this Bryant. Oh man, it's New York Giant game all over again. Come on, bro. Dang it. All right. Uh, obviously, again, same kind of thing here. Cover three is probably going to be the play for him. And if if I ever feel like I need to send pressure, I can always do that out of cover three, just because it's a sample. It's the same stuff as fire zone three. It's just from a different play. And uh, but the basic concept is, of course, in fire zone three. But if you guys get in the lab and work on it, you can find that you can do the blitz out of fire zone three, but you can do it out of any play in the formation. All right. Uh, yeah, I really like cover three here. I, I don't see myself getting out of this out of this blitz here. I like this cover three blitz that I've been doing. Pretty good coverage overall. I just have to watch out for the streaks. I really got to watch out for Dixon. That seems like his dude. Yep. Yep, there we go. That's why we shade the coverage down out of the cover three, because they will go with uh, the slot streaks. They won't go with the tight end streaks, and you saw he had a little success with that earlier. So my advice to him would be to continue to throw the slot streaks. That's me. Oh, pressure. Luckily, pressure saved my butt on that one. Pressure saved my butt on that one. Luckily, the blitz got in um, because he had a dude wide open over the middle. Cover five here. Dropped everybody in a deep blue zone, and I'm just going to watch the middle stuff, force him to go quick. Uh, double side pressure there out of the cover three. Again, you know, you is just, just apply the fire zone and the rush outside concepts. Apply that to cover three, and you can do it out of cover three. Um, I know I didn't break it down specifically, but, you know, that's what I like to do. What I like to, it's when I like to use it. So cover four, we're literally going to just blitz DeMarcus Ware here and Anthony Spencer. No quarterback spy needed in this situation. So we're, our job is to just watch the deep stuff. There we go. Just too many bodies in the way there, luckily. I mean, I could have gotten, I mean, that was probably a potential for fluke because I had the linebackers in the yellow still. I should have probably put them in deep blues, but I just forgot to make that adjustment and got lucky. All right, off coverage here. I still like out routes against off coverage, so I'm going to go to the slot post out of the split because I know that it has a 10-yard out route in it. And I um, also know it has two quick reads. All right. Yep, out route wide open on man. Oh, dang it, I tripped over myself. <laughs> ah, dang it. All right, so, I mean, here, I mean, obviously, you're just trying to preserve, if you're, if you're really trying to win, you're trying to preserve here, but I do want to show you reads in the offense and, and what I'm seeing pre-snap and that kind of stuff, so that's kind of why we're still going on this as if we were, you know, as if it was tie game. Let's stop the left edge. I'll just take that zig. I mean, if he drops it, he drops it, but it's, it's, it's still, it's just a little something I like to take. I mean, I, I'm fine with that. I'm fine. You know, I, my, my thought process is I'm not trying to, to make a huge play. I'm not trying to run a money play. I'm trying to work the ball up the field, walk down the field, uh, and, and be consistent with it. And again, I really like the counter against this look because he's just shading everybody to the left. You see the bear look to the left side, and uh, we can hit him out wide with the counter. And it's a one-on-one -on -one with the safety. I'll take three yards. I'll take three yards every time on the run. Double slow go here. reason I like the double slow go in this situation is I love that drag route, man. That drag route's money. Yep, drag route wide open. And you just take, the, you take a yard. That's fine. 
Uh, here, I normally I'm going to kick a field goal, but we'll just go ahead and show you a, a couple more plays. I like to put the comebacks out there in the red zone, and I'll use or catch them. And there you see. There's the user catch comeback. If you guys want to check that out, I'm going to have a tip coming out next week on how to use or catch comebacks. So be sure to go check out my YouTube channel and you can have all the access to the information you need uh, for stuff like that. And it's really actually a little bit better inside the five than it is in outside the five. So here we'll show you inside the five. Yep, there we go. So that time Dez actually held onto the ball. So. Okay, so 50, uh, situation like this, you know, he's probably just going to be trying to chuck it. So we like to go cover four, cover six. And when I say cover six, I mean cover six, like cover six deep. So. Hmm. Hmm. And this is a situation you can put the speed package in as well to put a little better coverage out there. Just your decision. All right, cover four. Purple the DTs, reboots both of these guys. No spy needed in this situation. Play action, corner route. And most people aren't gonna throw right at my user though, so that's I mean, that's all right. In that situation, what happened? I mean, call play action and. Um, just dotted me. I mean, he got me there. I, I, I pl overplayed the corner out in hopes that he would, like, look away immediately. Unfortunately, he didn't. So, that was a good play by him. Alright, set up the four, uh, cover four defense like we talked about in the guide, except I'm not using a spy right now. Get out! Dang it, Barry Church, man. You're in a deep blue zone. Ah, oh, Barry Church, you, sir. Dang on it. I don't give up 21 points. Dang it. That's not what I'm about. Oh, that's so unfortunate. Yeah, two man under is probably the best call in that situation. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. That was a stupid play call. I should have been a two man under. Yeah, see, two man under. I call two man under one time, get an interception. I mean, two man under is probably the best, best stock defense again this year. And I like it a lot. For seam, seam user catch, stuff like that. Two men under locks it up. They have to, you know, they have to go to the outside on two men under. Two men under basically what happens is they, they play to the inside of everything, and that's, you know, that's kind of what he was doing on me, and I just I failed to make an adjustment. It's my fault, and I gave up a touchdown because of it. Dang it! All right, uh, cover three look here, so. Let's go PA post. First read. Should be open here. Yep. Hurdle. Oh, I wanted him to hurdle. Dang it. So, that would mean we just see the first read wide open. We just take it, so. Dang it, I'm not about giving up 20 points. Oh, I'm so mad about that. I got sour grapes. And I can't believe I didn't. And see, that's what I'm saying. Like, you learn from your mistakes. So, next time, I'm not calling cover four in that situation. I'm going to call two men under and, and just, you know, overuse that, that coverage because that's what he's been liking to do. Don't get out of your play just because you feel like you have to. And that's, uh, you know, if he's throwing to the middle, the two men under is going to stop it. But the cover four may give it up like you saw it did. So, what you need to do with your little head, and it's what I should have done, is don't get don't get complacent and don't try to just change plays for the purpose of changing plays. You want to go ahead and just use the, the stupid two man under, call it. You'll, you'll be fine. What? Dang it. Okay, so we know that doesn't work anymore. Uh, that was a concept from last year, and that's why I put it in the Texan dig play. But man, I guess I threw it a little too early or something. I don't know what happened there. And it's already 9 o'clock. I've got to get on the road. I'm heading back to uh, my house tonight. Okay, so... Don't don't come to my house and creep on me either. Uh, so I'm going to go two men under here, obviously. I better go two men under or I'm going to kill myself. Uh, screen. Two men under actually does a really good job on screen. 
so man, two hundred and fit man. That is bad defense. Dang it. And it's not it's not the scheme's bad, it's not the plays are bad, it's just I've I've made two or three bad calls and that's I mean that's what I'm saying. You know, that this guy's not a bad player. Um you know, if I make two bad calls and I pay for it both times, so Yep, that's good read. Good read. Good read. See, I mean this dude's got a game. I think it is it I, I don't I can't remember if, if this was a game I got him. Alright, so there. There we go. Catch the ball, Claiborne. Um, also what I like to do out of two minute, and this is something that goes back to what I was liking to do out of my blitzes, is I really am a big fan of man zone combination combo coverage. See here, two combo coverage. Pick Carr! Brandon Carr! Dang it, Brandon Carr. Man, I'm struggling. We're both two heavy passing bros. So see, man, zone, zone. Zone on the left, man on the right. There it is. Oh my, can I get an interception, please? Three dropped interception in a row. Come on. I gave up 20 points. I've been through enough. Dang it. All right, so, I mean, you see the effectiveness of that. You send, it's, it's, it's a basic play, uh, but you just adjust out of it. And that's what I'm saying. Like, the, the plays we break down are basic, but you can do everything. You can do all kinds of stuff with it. Make it your own play. See that? Man on one side, zone on the other side. There you go. And then if you want, you can just slide car in. Pick. There you go. See, they're trying to throw man beaters. They're trying to throw man beaters because they're reading man coverage, but we're adjusting and making it a zone on one side of the field. Deception. He hesitated and then got caught and threw it because the pressure was coming in on the outside. Because the, the we sent four instead of just sending one or two. And there you go. It's really effective, guys. I... I'm not trying to. Uh, I'm not trying to say that it's like the best thing since sliced bread, but but it is pretty effective. There's the user catch on the sluggos I talk about. That's actually a little more advanced one. I probably should have talked about that a little bit more in the guide, but I mean it is a free. Um, basically, what you do is you just click on and you hold L2 and catch the ball. That's all it means. It's it's, it's pretty. It's actually easier than the one we talk about in the guide. So. Actually, I think it's something I found after I recorded the video, though. Tight end fades are, are really effective, guys. I don't know if you knew that or not. Uh, I really like tight end fades. And that's why I, I play a formation like doubles. I got I got a zig to the left. I got the, the wheel, and then I got the, the fade, and then the two comebacks on the outside. Really a tough tough play to stop in the red zone. And then if they if they forget about Romo, he's mobile. And uh, that's why I like the Cowboys. That's I mean, I, I, I don't... I don't see myself running with the, anybody else but the Cowboys, maybe the Niners. Um, the only reason I would run with the Niners over the Cowboys is for the secondary that the Niners bring to the table. They bring bigger dudes and stuff like that. Looks like this guy's going to go ahead and quit out. So I really am excited about the scheme of the week, guys. Welcome to week one. This was awesome. It was a great experience. I can't wait to bring back the West Coast playbook next week and finish that breakdown off because I know we had to, some video issues with that. But scheme of the week, episode one, he just disconnect glitched me because I got the loss for some reason. That's awesome. I really appreciate it, buddy. Anyways, guys, uh, scheme of the week. Week one, if you guys are wanting to subscribe to this series, you want to see these as they come out because they come out daily on my YouTube channel, go check out the YouTube channel. Also, want something else. If you guys go check out the YouTube channel, you're going to get access to a ton of free stuff, tips, ebooks, guides, all that. All that's released on the YouTube channel. Um, only the scheme of the week is posted here. So if you want to get more involved with me or you want to see more of what I do, my role in the Madden community, check out my YouTube channel or my Twitter page. Twitter is a, a huge uh, tool I use to uh, get information out to you guys. So that's that, guys. I really appreciate it. And for all you guys who know who I am and you know what I've been doing over the last couple of uh, uh, weeks, getting ready for Madden 25, go ahead and share this on Twitter for me. I really appreciate it. Let everybody see uh, the scheme of the week and, and uh, let everybody just get better at the game, guys. That's all I'm about. I'm all about helping you guys get better. If you guys have any questions, email me, Twitter, YouTube comment, whatever you need to do to get me the information, get me the information, and I'll see what I can do about it. I really appreciate the opportunity to share with you guys. It's really a blessing, and uh, I'm really excited for this, this Scheme of the Week series and uh, really pumped about it. So I uh, hope you guys are as pumped as I am, and we'll see you next week.